Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the 30 mile an hour Hemiway Zebra bike. Throttle only, 30 miles an hour. How did I do that? If you have a Hemiway bike like this Zebra bike or an Escape or a Cruiser bike, you know that they are capped out at 25 miles an hour. You can't go past that with the throttle. I found a way around it and I'm gonna show you how I did it today. You decide if you wanna do it on your bike or not. And it's so insanely easy. It's, it's plug and play. It is a plug and play upgrade. And when I say plug and play, I mean you unplug one plug, plug in another and you're done. It goes 30 miles an hour after that. So that is the plan for today. I'm gonna to show you how I did it. And then I'm gonna go out and ride the bike, show you the speed increase I got out of it. And then after that, I've got a bunch more information to tell you about it. Just help you decide if it's something you wanna do on your bike or not. And then at the end, I'll kind of walk us through the Zebra bike a little bit because I've been making a whole bunch of alterations and upgrades to this bike. And it is very, very quickly becoming one of my favorites in the garage. The bike just looks killer to me. I really like the look of this bike. So I'll walk us through all that, but enough talk. Uh, I know what you're here to see. You wanna know how I made this bike go 30 plus on the throttle. Let me show you. All right, everyone, this is how you bypass that speed limit setting and really unlock the Hemiway Zebra to its full potential. So I know this works on the Zebra. I'm guessing it'll probably also work on Escape and Cruiser and all the other Hemiway bikes as well. But the answer is right here with a new display screen. So you just unplug the old Hemiway display, plug in this new one, and you're good to go. It allows you to remove that uh, you know, 25 mile an hour cap on the speed limit. So let me turn this on for you so you can see what it looks like. This is the KD718 display. I'll say that again, KD718. That's the display you need to buy. It is plug and play. You just unplug the old, plug the new one in, you're done. Um, this is what it looks like. It's seen on a lot of other e-bikes. I've seen this screen before on other bikes. And if I go into the settings here, you just hold the plus and minus real quick jump in the settings. The second one right there, speed limit, toggle over to it, select it, and there you go. This one, this display allows you to go up to 56 miles an hour. Now, obviously this bike doesn't go 56 miles an hour, but it's telling the bike, okay, no limit. Just go as fast as you can. I was out on it riding it last night after dark and had it up to just over 30 miles an hour. So I know it'll go 30 plus. I'm gonna go out right now, ride it again for you, take a video. So you can see just how much it really opens up the Zebra bike. So let's get out on it. All right, we got limited running room here and the road kind of waves a little bit, but we'll, I'm gonna pedal till we get up to about 20 something and then I'll just let the throttle take over. Here we go, let's see what she's got. Wow, seven mile an hour increase over stock. That's pretty crazy. For a plug and play option like that, gain seven miles an hour top speed, that's crazy. That's crazy. And it just shows you what this bike is actually capable of if you just unleash it, right? If you just unleash the beast of this Hemiway, this is what you can do. 32 mile an hour, and that's, dude, that's with 4.9 inch wide tires on this bike. Imagine if this had like V Speedster tires on it. Those slick ones that are a little bit skinnier, they'd probably go even faster. I got ginormous tires on this bike. I've done a bunch of mods to this with, uh, I cut my own custom fenders, put on the huge tires. I altered the handlebar setup a little bit. I wanna go over all that with you so you can see all the things I've done to make this thing, I think, even better than it already was. And then I also wanna go back to the garage, give you a bunch more information about this display screen that you're gonna wanna know if you're gonna consider buying it. So let's go back and do that now. All right, now that you've seen the substantial speed increase I experienced by switching out displays, allowing me to bypass that speed limit, I do have some more important information about this display before you rush out and buy one. So let's talk about that. First off, this is the original Hemiway display that I took off. It's not a bad display. It's very 
readable and it's got some great functionality with the programming around the pedal assist. You can you know, change the number of levels of pedal assist and the power delivered in each one. I really like that functionality of it. It is a little bit, it's not as, as user friendly as I would like to do all that programming, but it's not bad. But there is some important things to know about this new display screen. Let me turn it on for you here so you can get a good look at what it looks like. It gives you a battery indicator in the top left and also the battery voltage at the same time. You get both. It has a watt meter, which the Hemiway display doesn't have. It's got the speedo, trip, and odometer, pedal assist settings. Speedometer is both digital and analog. And I guess let's just answer some questions. First things first, how much did this cost me? Depending on what site you order it from, right around 100 to probably 130 bucks. I bought it from a seller on eBay. After taxes, I paid $133 for this display screen. And I got it super quick. I ordered it on like a Monday night and it was in my mailbox Thursday morning. It came really, really fast and it was just plug and play. Like I said, I just plugged it in and it was ready to go. So that's the cost, 133 bucks is what I paid. You might be able to find one cheaper on like AliExpress, but it's probably not gonna get there as fast. The next thing I need to tell you about the display, only thing it does is allow you to re, uh, remove that speed limit, okay? It doesn't give you any more power. The power stays the same. There's no more acceleration. There's no more hill climb power, nothing like that. All it does is remove that speed limit so you can then basically push the Hemiway drivetrain to its max and get the, the top speed out of it. And I was wanting to do this for you too. If I prop this bike up on the kickstand and just hit the gas, Look at the top speed it gets to. Thirty-five point seven. So I guess if maybe I was a a lighter rider or had a nice tailwind or a downhill, maybe this bike could actually hit thirty-five. I don't know. <laughs> maybe but you're not gonna get any more power out of the bike. It's just gonna remove the speed limit for you. So you know the cost, you know the power. Uh, the, now I was talking about the functionality of this old screen, allowing you to change pedal assist levels and the power delivered. So if you change to the new one, do you lose that? And the answer is no. You, this screen does that same exact thing, but in my opinion, does it a little better. Let's go into the settings. You just hold plus and minus. You don't have to worry about toggling through screens with just graphics on there you don't really understand. It's clear as day what you're going to. You got wheel size here, speed limit, your screen brightness, and you just toggle through. So if I wanna go change those pedal assist settings like the Hemiway screen does, I just go into advanced and hit the I button over here to select. So go in there and right there, the third one down where it says power set. If I toggle down and I click the I button just once, you'll see that that became highlighted in yellow. And if I use up and down, I can select, do I want seven levels of pedal assist or nine levels? You can pick how many levels you want. So I like mine at five. I'm gonna go back to zero to five. And if I hit the I key again and select it one more time, it'll go in and now I can adjust and fine tune how much power is delivered in every pedal assist. And I know that I'm gonna keep one at 30, that's fine. I'm gonna to toggle down here though, and I'm gonna change that one because that was way too high. It really kicks like crazy in level two. I'm gonna back that down to like 40, 46. How about that? So you can, you have all the same pedal assist functionality with this screen and it's actually way easier to do it. There's no crazy button combinations to remember to press. It's just super simple. But let's get back out of here because there's one other very important thing that I wanna tell you about this screen and that is before you rush out and buy it you need to think to yourself whether you are if how bad you want your Hemiway warranty <laughs> because i can oh i haven't read the fine print but i would i'm almost certain that this would probably void the warranty on any Hemiway bike if you did this if you're going to be changing out electrical components on a bike and using something different than what the manufacturer has recommended and included on the bike if you're going to swap those out yeah i mean you're certainly probably going to void the warranty on this and i'm a guy I, I that if i break this bike i will go buy the parts myself and fix it myself 
I, I won't use the warranty. But if you have the intention of wanting to be able to use your warranty, then don't be swapping out parts like this. I mean, 25 mile an hour using this screen is plenty. I just, I like to take things kind of to the max and I like to customize and alter the bike. I've already made a bunch of changes to this. So I wasn't really, really concerned about the warranty, but that's something you need to strongly consider. But for me, I really like this upgrade. I mean, is it worth $133? To me it is. I like that extra speed. It was a very good speed, top speed increase. I now have a color display that is much easier to program. It's better to look at. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of positives for me on this. I, I've done a lot of changes to this bike. I put on these giant tires. That's one great thing about this Hemiway Zebra. It allows for these 4.9 inch Tsunami tires on here. It just looks so killer. I love the look of this bike. This is an ultimate, this is a great platform to start with. You could build kind of your ultimate e-bike. I might do a lot of stuff with this bike. We'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it right now. I love the huge fat tires on it. By running those giant fat tires, I uh, had to customize these fenders. You can see I, I cut the little lip that hangs down. I cut that off the edge of the tire in order to get the fenders to fit right. So they cover basically the center of the tread and then there's nothing that hangs down on the side. They're just flat now. And I mean, I like that look too because it gives me the splash protection, but yet it still shows all of the tread of the tire. So you can still see these giant tires. And when I put the bigger tires on, you know, the, the fender no longer followed the curve of the tire. I had to extend this bar out to get it off the tire here and then up top here. I have the fender kind of stuck into the fork and then zip tied on. I couldn't go underneath the front fork because it was just too close to the tread and I was going to rub. But this setup, it doesn't rub at all. I did the same thing on the back. I just cut off the, the lip that hangs down to get clearance, extended this bar out, and then forget trying to get all the hardware back in these mounting points. I just, I zip tied it right here and I also zip tied it down in there and they fit perfect they work they protect from splash and they still show the big tire i really like that now another thing i did to this bike initially was to get the seating position more upright i had put on a stem riser here like the, this is a stem riser raises the handlebars up like three inches but it just didn't look right on there this ended up being very long it was like that long it was pretty tall so in order to get that same effect of putting a stem riser on what I did instead was I went out and I bought a more dramatic curve in the handlebars this is actually a 90 millimeter rise in the handlebars here's the old set for comparison you know there's a little curve this has got a big curve and that lifted my handlebars about three and a half inches by using this handlebar and then I also changed out this piece right underneath here. I'm not sure what it's called, but here was the original piece, right? That goes right here. And then your handlebars stick out like that far, like three inches out here. So I just bought one that doesn't stick out at all. So I've raised the handlebars up about three and a half inches and I've brought them back towards me another two inches. And that gave me the upright ride position that I really like. And the other, big thing about these handlebars is that they are much longer. They're 780 millimeter. So they're th a full three inches wider than the original handlebars. And what that did, and I highly recommend this one actually. So I got the nice rise in the handlebars, but also when I first rode this bike, I commented that it felt a little heavy in the front end. And that's, you know, the bike's very stretched out and it's got a big rake in the front. Makes the front end kind of feel and steer a little heavy. But by bringing the handlebars back to me, raising them up, getting wider bars on there, it actually got rid of that feeling. It doesn't feel heavy in the front end anymore. And I think it looks pretty good on there as well, especially getting that stem riser out of there. This is a much better, cleaner look. And I got rid of that heaviness in the front end. I also changed out the grips. I didn't like the leather grips. They always just spin in my hand once they get heated up. So I put on these rubber locking grips. These have that little Allen bolts there that 
lock on the end of the bar. They don't spin at all in your hand. Still have the palm rest. I like these. They're so cheap on Amazon and they just feel so much better in your hand. So I've got this thing set up now, kind of how I think it should come from the factory. It's got a big wide set of handlebars on it, locking grips, giant fat tires, the uh, slimmer design fenders, a color display, and I also threw on a suspension seat post to take some sting out of the bumps, and I'm really, really enjoying this Hemiway Zebra right now. I'm liking this bike a lot, and I'm sure I will continue to fine tune this bike and make it the best possible version of itself that it can be, but I wanted to give you this information about this display screen because I know there was a fair amount of people looking for a way to bypass that speed limit, and clearly the Hemiway drivetrain is capable of much higher speed than it's programmed to do. So I hope you found that helpful. I'll throw some links to all this stuff in the description below so you can find it if you decide you want to do this. And I uh, hope you enjoyed, found that interesting or helpful. If you did, do me a favor, uh, consider hitting subscribe, coming out and back out and checking out some more videos from Citizen Cycle. Talk to you all later. Thanks.